the XFL has officially hit rock bottom. Nah, I'm just kidding. But seriously, <laughs> The Rock has purchased into the XFL among a group as well as, as Danny Garcia. He has now become a uh, owner in the XFL, which is big, big news for the XFL. As y'all know, The Rock got tons of fans. Everybody loves him. Shoot. My question, though, is what does this mean for the XFL, and will the XFL actually survive under The Rock's leadership? Rome, I'm going to start with you. All right, before I before I answer the question, I just want to point out how extremely historic this is, all right? You all see it. We got sports for the culture. And, I mean, The Rock and uh, Danny Garcia buying this XFL franchise is – or not franchise, not even franchise, my bad, league – is extremely important for the culture. These are two people of color, both minorities. One is a female. She is the first female to be a league commissioner, league owner, however you want to put it, whatever. This is this is monumental. Uh, and I know we can all say, oh, it's the XFL, where they make it. We'll get into that in like a second. But regardless of if it makes it or not, this is a big deal. This is a big day. Uh, is this something for the history books? Now, where the XFL make it? I'm going to be honest, man, I'm completely biased on this, bro. I've always wanted the XFL to make it. I'm a, I'm a diehard football fan of all kinds. Like, I'll watch Flag. I'll watch whatever. Uh, so I've always wanted the XFL to be a little bit of a, if not competition for the NFL, like a minor league system. And uh, I'm also biased in the fact that I'm a huge fan of The Rock. Liked him as a kid when he was a wrestler. Love all his movies. So I want to see this man succeed. I love Ballers on HBO. And this just seems like a, a real-life episode of Ballers. Like, I think this the series ended, but... Looks like it's continuing in real life, man. So uh, this is this is this is a win, man. Like I, I think the XFL is going is going to be great, and I think uh, I think whenever they get it started back up, whenever this COVID stuff is over and we see some some XFL on the field, I think it's going to be a, a great product. Honestly, we could talk about the product that we just saw before COVID hit. I don't think that, that was a bad product. I think they were already on the on the right path, and I think under the Rock's leadership and Danny Garcia's, it'll be monumental, man. This is this is huge. Yeah, man, the rock, the rock, the rock got a big, the big, big time fan base. And you and I, I agree, bro. You talking about history in the making, like you know, what I'm talking about. You talking about a minority, not buying a team, buying a league and a woman with that. So, like, yeah, I'm, I'm pulling for the XFL too. G, what's your reaction on the Rock and Danny Garcia uh, buying into the XFL, man? What do you think? Shit, sure, man. What can the Rock not do, man? Give you the people's elbow. Give you the rock bottom. Know your role. If you smell what the rocks, I don't even know what that man can do at this point in life, man. Shit. But what they succeed, though, that's the thing, though, man. After I do do some, some people do want more football after February, you know, after the Super Bowl. Some people just want a cool time in between because then you have basketball and then you have baseball and you still got. Hockey going, so I mean the NFL is just gonna have to the XFL. I mean, pardon me, they're gonna just have to find. It's gonna be hard to find fans because we're talking about during that during that during that season, you have the start of baseball, you have the NBA playoffs, but now it could be changed. I'm I'm not mistaken, right? Not that the NBA season starts starts in December, so you could you could pull fans during that season, but. I mean, how long? How long of a league? How long? How long of a season is it? Is it like ten weeks? Sixteen? Uh, it's gonna be tricky because even then, I wasn't watching. I was. I kid you not. I wasn't watching or looking forward for those games. So I know they had them on Saturdays, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, that's because that New York team was some trash, though. Bro, that DC was defenders, like, we was out here getting it. <laughs> bro, that that what was, was it? The team with the dragon. <laughs> uh, oh no, I think that was the, the Tampa team. Y'all, y'all were like the Renegades or something. I don't know. Oh my God! See, even the name sounds sound like <laughs> what? Sound like Bufui. Some shenanigans, man. I mean, you're gonna have to give us some flavors. Put put some put some sasson on it. Put something for us to like, <laughs> want to watch it. Not the Goya brand, cause. Fuck Goya at this point. <laughs> a bunch of bums, man. Yo, yo, come get my mom's a double, you heard? Got it. Oh, <laughs> but, yeah, at this point, it's just like, I mean, you're going to have to give us something that we want. More fireworks. I need to get – I need someone get get rock bottom in the 50-yard line. I need something. Something to pull my interest back. Hey. 
Maybe they bring back the old jerseys. You remember the, the He Hate Me? That was a classic. Y'all know, y'all remember the He Hate Me? Shoot, there was actually yeah. a couple guys that got, got recruited in the NFL, got drafted this year because of, of, of what they did in the XFL. So, Bryce, last but not least, what's your opinion on the XFL, man? How are you feeling? What's your reaction? And will it survive? Man, first, let me start by saying shout out to The Rock, you know, for, for, for taking this chance because he definitely just took a chance. You know, he got big money, so $15 million, that's baby money to him. I think one thing uh, I don't want to lose sight of is, you know, definitely it's for the culture, definitely a big thing. But when you're talking about a league that costs $15 million and uh, <laughs> NBA is what valued it over a billy, well over a billy, I'm sure the NFL probably, who knows how much they valued over. Uh, I don't know, man. It's hard. It's hard for me to say how big of an impact this will actually have on the culture right now, but – I still think it's a positive thing, man. Anytime you got people trying to make something happen. Now, this is my question for you guys, man. Do y'all realize that the guy that made The Rock, you know, The Rock, the one that's The Rock, the one that just paid 15 million for the XFL, you know, the guy that made him is named Vince McMahon. He's mm-hmm. also the guy that started the XFL. So if the guy that made you couldn't make this a success, I'm not going to put all my marbles in your basket on you making it a success. I just can't do it. Now, on the flip side, on the flip side, there's ways to make the XFL succeed. If they want to hire me on a consulting tip, come on, y'all see the at, at Bryce XXVII, I got y'all. But this is what you have to do if you really want the XFL to succeed. First, you have to recognize that there's no beating the NFL, right? Because of the height they've already reached, you're not going to catch them. You don't even, you shouldn't even be in competition. Honestly, you should change your product as much as possible to keep it football but get it as far away from the NFL as possible. That's your first option. Second option you have to be successful, to sustain, to say, okay, we can't beat the NFL. You guys know the old verbiage. If you can't beat them, join them. The XFL is going to have to be a minor league for the NFL if they don't change their product enough to where it's distinctly different from the league. Now, if they're able to get in there as the minor league to the NFL, I think it could be the success the NFL's needed for years. I mean, what we got a practice squad for, we can just have a whole 40 guys on a roster, you know, right under our main team. I think that would work out perfectly. And the XFL could be, even if they did it how the D-League did initially, where multiple teams were assigned to one XFL team, you know, remember how the NBA D-League did it? That could work. That could work. But the XFL, mark my words, the XFL will go under if they don't do one of those two things. Either one, differentiate yourself from the NFL as much as possible, or two, can't beat them. Join them. Hey, Bryce, you make some really good points, bro. And uh, I, I, I hope they do the second thing, man. If you, I don't think they're going to be able to beat them or separate themselves, so they're going to have to join them. Another point that you made that you brought up, too, that I thought was interesting was uh, the league only being $15 million. And to put that into perspective, uh, I just looked it up. The NFL is actually worth $2.86 billion. The NBA is around about $2.1, $2.2 billion. And the MLB has been around a little bit longer. It's about three point two billion. So, uh, yeah, when we're talking leagues, yeah, they they got this one off the dollar, the dollar, the dollar menu or whatever. But uh, <laughs> that's that's how it be sometimes, man. Like if we were to look when when these other leagues started, they were probably in the millions too. So hopefully, they can uh, find a way to, to make it work and, and get hey, it up there. Hey, the rock, up. the rock, the rock, cop the two for fifteen. <laughs> Yo, hold on. The foe for foe. But uh, hold on, hold on. Before we switch topics, the end of the XFL needs to comp- need to compete with the NCAA. You know, recruit those football players. Yeah, take that's football. another that's another avenue that they could definitely take. That's the only way I see them going. They, they'll be able to pay them more. They'll be able to pay them more than the, than the uh, NCAA can once the NCAA starts paying them. The XFL will be able to give them more than that. I'm sure. For sure. You make a good point, though, G. That that's a very good point. And what's the uh, players are out there? What's the XFL quarterback that uh, he signed to the Panthers, right? Oh, PJ, that's my guy, little dude PJ from Lamb. Lamb Temple, man. He a dog. Yeah. So I mean, this this minor league system it could definitely be a little farm farm system for the NFL if done right. Yeah, I mean, I honestly I could see I could see that being. I mean, honestly, uh, G, you bring up you bring up a great point, bro. That if they do it right, man, they could really start stealing some of that talent pool from from the NCAA. Because I think that's another thing with the XFL is uh, people like recognizable talent. You know, 
even if they did something like these days, man, personalities sell more than product does. If you could sell some personalities, honestly, that's that's a, a part of the reason, in my opinion, that the UFC got so big because that ultimate fighter show. You got to know those fighters inside and out before you ever got to know them as a fighter. You know what I mean? And like if the XFL could maybe do something like that, which The Rock knows all about coming from WWE, a personality based business. Uh, if, he, if they could start giving some personality into it, they could really change the game because the NFL has done everything in their power to limit you from knowing the, the players' personalities. Um, going as far as to not even let the players take off their helmets so you can associate the face with the play. You know what I mean? So I don't know, man. It's, it's interesting. Do you bring up a good point, bro? Think about it, man. Even now, right? There's talks that allege, allegedly, I don't want to say that they're doing it, but the NCAA are trying to like, make up a schedule for football we're talking about during an epidemic right now like they're trying to like milk these players where they're not getting nothing out of it you know all that tv network money who's getting that you know we're talking about coaches getting paid millions of dollars programs are getting paid so much money now they're trying to like open campuses that are not even open you're talking about like universities are, are shut down at this point right no classes are trying to bring back players to play I don't want to say this, but I do want to say this. We're talking about a business that can't fail, and they don't want to say, but it is true. The NCAA is a business, is a big business that can't fail. But off the backs of what? Amateur players? Come on now, man. I've been a big hater of the NCAA just for that simple fact that they're just milking those players, man, and not giving them what they're worth. Shit, man. I I believe if this is the angle that the Rock is going in with the uh, XFL. Recruit those five, four stars, three stars coming out of high school. As long as they give them some kind of assurance, you know, because we're all talking about concussion protocols and all this other stuff. It's always the health of the players. Make sure they at least have some kind of landing spot if it doesn't work out. If anyway, they could continue their careers there, right? Because they don't get drafted. They could still have some kind of career with them. Mm -hmm. so they still get paid. It's just a matter of fact, I believe this is a big thing in, in hindsight i haven't even think about it until now it's like i believe these if the rock and them are coming in some way somehow it's not to take down the nfl but to take down the ncaa in one way or another another excellent point too that you got me thinking g is uh the rock off name recognition alone will probably pull in some fairly fairly famous or, or recognizable names that are on the come up i mean how dope would it be to be like, yeah, I'm gonna go play in the Rocks League. Like I said, that like, oh, you want to go to to this little school and wherever, or you want to go play in the Rocks League? Like, that's probably gonna gonna make a bit a, a bit of a difference. And I know uh, Bryce, you made a good point. If Vince McMahon could make it successful, the Rock is is probably not as rich, probably nowhere near as rich as Vince McMahon, but he's a much more recognizable name and a much more likable person, who I think uh, will will bring much much needed spotlight to this sport. Honestly, I think this is going to be a success. I know I said I was biased, Brad, but the XFL about to blow up, man. They about to blow up. And the D.C. defenders, man, they're going to be the first champions. I'm calling it now. <laughs> I'm going to piggyback off of that, uh, Rome. I, I got I got to keep it going, man, because honestly, you made a really good point. Bro, Vince McMahon, think about Vince McMahon. All right, think about this. Think about Vince McMahon in your living room trying to recruit your son to come play football with him. <laughs> nah, yeah. Like you gonna listen to that 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 slime ball? Like he did, did nothing about his aura is gonna tell you. All right, I want to go. I want to go play for this guy. The Rock comes in charismatic as can be. This dude is a like get you fired up, and he's a recognizable. He's got a he's actually got a football background. Vince McMahon has no background in football whatsoever. At least The Rock played. You know what I'm saying? Yo, dude, come in there, get you fired up, give you that speech, hit you with the you know. Like you said, bro, in Ballers, he had dude over here commit, committing to different schools. He had all the major athletes. He had, you know, he was recruiting them. Yo, he's a charismatic dude, bro. Honestly, you're talking about LeBron for president. The Rock, man, if you had wanted to be a politician, bro, The Rock could be a politician. He is a charismatic dude. He makes people follow him. So, I mean, I don't know if it's going to work, but if you're talking about recruiting college players, shoot, you might have something there, man. You might have something. And he definitely more than Vince McMahon would. That's, that's without a doubt. All right, guys, let's let's just put this in uh, in a little perspective. How much do you think uh, The Rock made when he did that movie when he played the little tooth, the tooth fairy guy? <laughs> Leave it alone, man. How much did he make on that movie? <laughs> the Rock paid $15 million for a league 
right? And you all think he's going to be in people's basements recruiting him? Are y'all crazy? <laughs> uh, are y'all mad? The, the Rock, the Rock bought this, and he's going to set it up. This is a, this is what you do when you have money, and I and I like it. You know what I'm saying? He's going to try to turn this into an asset, but The Rock is also a guy with the he's he got his hand in a million things. He got a hand in a million things, right? The reason, the reason that the XFL got the amount of success it got the first time around, right, is because it recognized that they had to entertain. They had to entertain. The XFL was all entertainment. While the NFL was all about the game, the XFL was all about putting a smile on your face while you watch. Now, that is going to be the key for them. And I think they can do it, you know, through exposing personalities within within the teams. You know what I mean? Maybe get a little reality show type thing going. Maybe The Rock could be the one to start that. Maybe they had a little, like, the contender reality show where one of these guys in this show ends up being the quarterback and The Rock. Yo, coach. yeah. Maybe that works, right? That would the Rock coach. But, but, <laughs> but listen, but I'm telling you. The Rock is a guy that's got his hand in a lot of things because he's a multifaceted individual. When you have that, you got to know that he's going to be allowing – most likely Danny Garcia will be the one really running this operation while The Rock gets back to Hollywood and does what he does. He'll come in, check on it, throw his face in there when he needs to to get a little more attention on it. But I'm not going to overestimate his, 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 uh, his final contribution. Although, I mean, hey, he, he shelled out the money, so you know he's serious. But I just don't know how much of himself he'll be able to give with everything he's got going on. But it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see. It's gonna be interesting to see. I think I think his football background. I think that leads me to believe that he does have like a little bit of a stake in this, uh, like beyond money. I think he does want to see this succeed. Probably his relationship with Vince too. I think a part a lot of the reason uh, Vince let this go is because Vince is getting older, man. He's he's honestly up there in age. I believe he's like seventy or something. So he probably don't even really have a lot of time to really try to see this through. So, I mean, I don't know, man. I, like I said, I'm biased as hell on this, bro. Like, I feel like every time I bring it up, I'm just, I'm just saying it's going to be successful, but uh, <laughs> no, nah, I no. really, I, go ahead. I, no, I was going to say, I think we all want it to work, man. Cause like, you know, one thing I'm tired of is just monopolies being running with the sports leagues, man. You know, Hey, honestly, if the XFL was really smart, you know what they would do? They were smart. They would bring an XFL to Gas Network, man. We stream live sports. We do all that, <laughs> man. What you mean? If y'all really want to get serious, XFL, y'all see the ads. Y'all see the ads, man. Call us up, man. It's honestly not a bad idea. Nothing wrong. Demelo Ragu, hit us up. Y'all can come stream the XFL. We'll only charge a small fee. <laughs> Just a small fee. Very small fee. <laughs> I believe it'd be very workable, too. Very workable.